everybody. Uh, welcome to this next NCLEX Nurse Think video that we've made for you. My name is Judy Herman. I'm a consultant with Nurse Think, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the NCLEX RN review guide. It's a conceptual review guide that we believe is great for NCLEX prep, but we also think, think it's so much more. So please join me as we look through this guide see how you can use it in your classroom, see how you can use it in assisting your students to prepare for NCLEX, see how you may use it as you design your clinical and your simulation experiences. There's so many tools with this book and we just wanna spend a little bit of time showing you all of those. So first we're gonna start by talking a little bit about this book and how it's part of NCLEX Nurse Think, excuse me, Nurse Think Complete. So Nurse Think Complete, you can find information more about this entire package at the nursethink.com website. The tools that are included in the package include what we call the Student Success Book Bundle. This includes the Nurse Think Notebook, the Conceptual Case Study Book, and this book that we're going to talk about today, the NCLEX Conceptual Review Guide. Also included are the clinical judgment exams, the V clinicals, and the NCLEX preview and review. Again, today we're only going to talk about the conceptual review guide, but one of the reasons I decided to make this video is that a lot of people think it's only for studying for NCLEX. Again, it's so much more than that, and I hope you'll agree after you've watched this video. So let's talk a little bit about what the NCLEX review guide includes. When we were designing this, we wanted this to be an active book, not like other NCLEX review books that you just read and do questions. We wanted almost every page to have exercises, case studies, next-gen thinking uh, opportunities so that you are actively engaged, the students are actively engaged while they're reading, while they're studying, while they're thinking about their preparation for NCLEX. So what that produces for you in your classroom, your clinical, or your lab, Go to clinical cases. These go to clinical cases. There's 32 cases throughout the book. And I'll show you when we get uh, a little bit farther, I'll show you how that looks and, uh, and how involved the students have to get in that process. When they see those go to clinical cases, they'll actually do an exercise called nurse think time. Nurse think time is based on something we at nurse think called prioritization power. We call it the top three. One of the things that students often struggle with is how to distill all the information that they've received. What are the 30 side effects of this? What are the 20 outcomes of this? What are the 15 interventions I need to do? And really start thinking about what are the top three? The top three interventions, the top three complications, it gets them to start to really whittle down what nurses need to do at the bedside. And again, I can't reiterate enough, this is another one of our products that gets students right at the bedside thinking about what's going on with the patient. There's also 166 what we call exemplars. So even though the book is categorized according to concepts, each of these exemplars represent conditions, diagnoses, pathologies, um, stages of development perhaps, uh, any time that nursing care might be involved. And so in just a moment, I will show you what these look like, but those exemplars provide concise and complete information about many different, again, diseases, conditions, problems, developmental stages, things like that. As I mentioned before, scattered throughout the pages are just times and opportunities for students to look at a picture, look at a chart, and answer kind of puzzling next generation questions, asking them to think about uh, potential complications, equipment they need, what isolation they need. Again, it's at the bedside, but it's based on active engagement of students in the clinical or in the lab. Before I go any further in the PowerPoint, I'm just going to end this and I'm going to take you to the internet. When we get into the internet, we're going to find, first we're going to go to the Nurse Think website. And I would encourage you to visit this uh, website frequently if you have questions about this resource. You'll go here and uh, hit either Nurse Think, uh, well you should hit RN Complete, and go to the Student Success Bundle. That'll pop up the different books. You can scroll down, there's the three books, but we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna learn more about the conceptual review guide. So here we have a little bit of information about the guide. There's a sample chapter and there's also several videos, which I'm sure this video will soon be part of. So let me take you to the sample chapter. 
when we get into the sample chapter, what you're going to find is some information that really will be helpful as you plan to use this in your class, clinical, or lab. First of all, one of the things I say about every single one of our Nurse Think resources is the importance of the table of contents and the index. Both of those are really going to be helpful to you as you plan your classes. We know that it, your time is very limited, and just to go through and, and try and figure out where everything is can sometimes be frustrating. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how it's uh, set up. Let me get to, let's go to chapter seven, because that's probably the one you can see the best with that, that um, uh, watermark in there. So chapter seven is on protection. And if you look, there's two go to clinical cases, one on meningitis and one on pancreatitis. There's also uh, more exemplars that talk about things like cellulitis, wound infection, and septicemia, gout, HIV and AIDS, influenza. Uh, at the following uh, part of every single chapter are nurse think questions, quiz questions, and along with that are uh, the rationales so that students can look at those rationales. They also can learn um, from the fact that all of our quiz questions are fully blueprinted. So let's say you're teaching about inflammation in your classroom. Well, you may want to do use uh, the lupus and the rheumatoid arthritis exemplars to help as you go through with that content. So we'll go through here. In addition to being uh, indexed according to concept, they're also indexed according to specialty. So perhaps you're a mental health faculty or a women's health faculty or a pediatric faculty, you'll find that in here. We also uh, index them according to the um, and collects blueprints. So you'll find management of care, basic care and comfort. We tried to figure out which exemplars would be best in each of these areas. So some of you have uh, arranged your curriculum based on those um, different client needs associated with the NCLEX blueprint. So you'll find them in here. So as we go through, uh, here's one of the chapters and here is one of those go to clinical cases. So here's um, some discussion about the case itself, uh, includes things like vital signs and other information. And here's that nurse think time. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller for you so you can see, uh, maybe that's too small. So there we go. You'll see that there are the top three priorities, assessments, or cues. The priority lab tests or diagnostics, priority interventions or actions, priority uh, potential and actual complications, nursing implications, medications, and then patient education or discharge issues. If you're up on next gen, you know that we've used some of the words like cues or actions to get the students to really be thinking about that um, NCSBN clinical judgment model, a measurement model that they're using to design the next generation NCLEX. And so we really wanted to use that terminology to get students immersed into it very quickly. You'll find that this book really does meet some of those needs for next generation by getting students to think that clinical judgment piece that so often is missing when we do endless amounts of PowerPoints and just students memorize PowerPoints, they go into their classroom and take lower level questions. So I know all of you have made concerted efforts to beef up, beef up your questions to make them application analysis level. And what we're encouraging now here at Nurse Think is to take that same level of enthusiasm and make sure that your classes are active and engaged where students are, are demanded to think fairly frequently throughout your class time. It should not be passive, but they should be actively engaged. These are a great way to keep your students actively engaged in the classroom. So that case study was about the hypertensive disorders. It was about preeclampsia. And so what you'll find is the answers are actually here in those little yellow light bulbs that show you. So students don't have to go far to get the answers, but they do have to dig a little bit into content. This one is gonna be on a normal newborn care and here is our newborn uh, exemplar. So that's how each of the chapters looks. Again, 166 exemplars with 32 case studies. Each of the 32 case studies include the nurse think time, but all of the chapters also include next generation exercises. So here is, when studying the stages of labor, make sure you fully understand the terms involved. What terms in this image are unfamiliar to you? Students can read this, they see the progression of the stages of labor, they can look those up, and they're actively engaged in the process. 
Um, so then here's the chapter on circulation. Again, looks very similar. We developed this book based on the idea that students naturally, um, and I don't want to say these days, but I want to say that students don't appear to do reading from front to back of a chapter and read all of that information. What we find is that we have developed a society of immediate gratification and scanning. So we're gonna scan. So maybe here a student is completing the uh, priority top three needs and they scan and look at the priority nursing implications. And here it talks about things like subtle changes in a neurological status or assessing INO and bowel sounds at abdominal girth. That uh, scanning with white space and, and bulleted uh, information really appeals to today's readers and we think it's gonna be uh, really popular with, with students. We hear from them all the time. So here's a graph that talks a little bit about different types of shock and then the goals of medical treatment. So again, you'll find various types of graphics, types of, um, here's talking about the, the uh, normal um, cardiac conduction and then what happens when a client, uh, client's heart is in atrial fibrillation. So again, we are just really happy with uh, the feedback we've been getting and certainly having students get really involved. So here they have to look at different hypertension guidelines as far as elevated stage one, two and hypertensive crisis. Again, we know that if students are actively engaged, they're going to listen, they're going to um, be much more uh, prone to learn and it really appeals to a lot of what we know about learning. All right, so let me come out of here and we're going to go back to the uh, PowerPoint. I'm going to stop share for just a moment and let me go back to the PowerPoint. And as we talk about the PowerPoint, what I would like to say, we are going to go come back to the internet in just a moment because we are going to look at faculty resources. Okay, so let's say you're building your syllabus and you're thinking about what type of assignments or how can I use the NCLEX review book to actually come in and help, help with my assignments. So one of the ways that you can do use the book is something that we call the read and do. Read and do the exercises. So here you've actually identified that these two pages have good information when we're talking about this topic. Uh, we're talking about pressure ulcers here. And so there's an exercise that looks at the stages of uh, pressure ulcers. And that exercise is something that the students can do and be very involved with. So what a great exercise to complete. Or here we have read a couple of pages and complete the exercise about the pain scale. Now, I'm not naive enough to know that this is going to be your only work, but you may um, include this with your other readings. One of the things that happens and that I encourage you to think about is that when we say read chapter 15, students today really want to know what in chapter 15, what is vital for me to read. Um, one of the things that happens is our, our textbooks are so comprehensive and they're so detailed that the chapters have gotten to be onerously long. And sometimes students will look and say, 300 pages or 110 pages, I'm not gonna read anything. So sometimes giving focused readings is gonna be so helpful and that's one of the things that this book can do. Or, but again, still give your readings in your other textbooks, make them a little smaller, and then use these readings to kind of culminate what they, what they have learned from their readings and use this as a point of discussion when they get to class. A second thing that you might want to do is, in addition to completing those exercises and mnemonics, have them watch one of the videos. I'll show you where the videos are in a minute. But in this assignment, we've had them look at the pharmacology focus in the chapter on comfort. Obviously, that's going to talk a lot about pain and pain management. What are the different medications we have available to us? How do we assess pain? How do we evaluate the effectiveness of our pain medications? And so you can develop assignment on these videos. We now have 39 videos that you can watch that are associated with this book that will keep your students quite busy throughout the semester. Another resource that we might have is that uh, have the students read the, the go to clinical case and maybe they'll read the exemplars and then you do the nurse think time in class. This allows you to spend a little bit of time. Their students can hopefully hit the floor running because they read that brief case prior to class, maybe thought about it, maybe read the exemplar. 
And then in class, whether you're live or virtual, you can have them go through the nurse think time. Have them pick the top three priorities, put them into breakout groups, have them do think pair share exercises where they call each other on their cell phones. You know, get them involved, get them active, and then reconvene and then talk about what their answers were. And then they can even check them. One of the things you'll find is that, you know, nobody's perfect and some of these exercises maybe you'll disagree with one of the assessments what a great discourse that is for students to have that say no i think these are the top three or i couldn't get it down to any less than four assessments for this client again that's thinking that's active engagement and so and what you want to see in your students Another way you may want to have the students do it is that they actually use the go to clinical case, but they also complete that nurse think as a ticket to class. I'm sure many of you have used tickets to class. You can have your students, uh, if they're using the hard copy book, they can take a picture of their um, completed nurse think page and upload it to your learning management system. If you're using the PDF, they can, if they have PDF, um, adapters, they can complete that or they can print it out and scan it. There's so many different things they can do, but you can do that before class. If you're in the virtual environment, if you're the, in the live environment, then they can bring it to class with them. You can kind of do a quick scanning of your rows and make sure that the students have completed it. Um, so in this, it talks a little bit about taking that uh, nursing complete, bringing it to class, and then actually with a partner completing the go to clinical case using the information in another area. Two different ways you can do it. So you can have them do it alone, you can do it totally as a large class, or you can have them work on it in partners and then reconvene and talk about it. So remember, so many resources, so many things that are available. Remember that pair work and group work is gonna be so powerful. I have found, you know, we always talk about this generation loves group work. I'm not sure that's true, but we try and encourage it because we certainly know that nursing is a profession where you're gonna work in a lot of groups and you need to make sure that you can work in groups, that you understand different people's priorities and perspectives. One way that I found to make that a little bit more comfortable is doing pair work, where they actually work with another individual. It seems to help them a little bit with the uh, keeping them active and engaged. You know, I always worry about if you have groups more than four or five students, there's kind of the two students doing all the work and the other three that are on their phones. So you really want to make sure that everyone's engaged. Usually if you do pair work, both um, feel some responsibility and accountability. Another thing that you want to really think about is connecting each of these assignments with real life nursing, standing at the bedside, you guys taking care of patients who have postpartum depression. What do you hear about postpartum depression? And also with their life experiences, we know that they all come to us with rich life experiences. You can also talk a little bit about what they've encountered in clinical, what they've encountered in their classroom versus their lab. Again, you want to bring it all together as much as possible, and this book will help you do that. So here we, we may find that you can use the exemplars to summarize other readings. So let's say these, all of those um, pregnancy issues that are listed there under topics, hypertensive disorders, gestational diabetes, constipation, iron deficiency, abortion and miscarriage, those are things that you're gonna talk about in your women's health course. So maybe you're gonna assign them readings from your textbook, but then they can use these brief readings, one, two, at the most three pages, to actually summarize and um, emphasize what's critical. Think about how important that is if they're exposed to information in one set of readings, a second set of readings kinds of summarizes it, and then you do brief case studies or talk about it in class. You've certainly uh, done a fair amount of repetition and that's gonna help the students uh, remember. So, Leadership, a lot of us teach leadership. And so one of the things I would recommend is that you have them compare the two case studies. So here are the two case studies in the chapter on oxygenation. It's an adolescent with cystic fibrosis. It's an older gentleman with COPD, two very, well, cystic fibrosis isn't all that common, but we do teach it commonly when we talk about pediatric respiratory diseases. And so these two compare and contrast, right? We want to think about, you know, tell me a little bit about what are the priorities? Are both of them hypercapnic? Are both of them hypoxic? 
what kind of management strategies. And you'll find that those compare and contrast words are so powerful for the students to be thinking about as they're going through these exercises. Uh, call bell exercises. Let's see both of these patients' call bells go off. Who are you going to go see first? What kind of words would indicate that this client is going to be the highest priority? So let's say that I'm taking care of a client with uh, COPD. It looks like he's coughing. Um, and let's say um, he's dyspneic to a point where he, can only, he can't speak. All right, that's gonna be something that I'm really gonna to wanna to answer that call bell quickly. Or a client with cystic fibrosis who has so many secretions that they, they're, they're choking on their secretions and they need to be suctioned or they need an expectorant or something like that to ease and open their airway. We can also think about, remember prioritization is also gonna be used as we uh, think about delegation. So when we think about, okay, how does this patient look? Can that be delegated to a licensed practical or vocational nurse? Can that patient be delegated to a, a UAP for portions of their care? Um, and what would indicate that they shouldn't be delegated? Uh, and, and again, that needs to be considered when you're delegating the care. And then what are their priorities? What, what is, you know, Coughing and clients with cystic fibrosis all have a hard time with mucus mobilization. They need to be hydrated. Um, clients with cystic fibrosis may have, um, you know, percussor vests or clients with um, uh, COPD may be on bronchodilators and expectorants. But again, it's about getting those secretions out of their lungs and um, easing their respirations and decreasing the uh, incidence of atelectasis and pneumonia. Getting these stu the students to have these rich conversations are going to be so important, whether you do it in Zoom, whether you do it live, whether you do it as your pre and post conferences for clinical. What a great discussion this would be after you've taken care of several clients with respiratory um, phenomenon. And in clinical is where you can also give those NCLEX quizzes that are at the end of each chapter, have the students check their answers, and then anything that is going to be uh, troubling to them, anything they don't understand is something that they can bring to their clinical group in a smaller group and discuss it. Uh, again, these can also supplement your uh, simulation. So with social distancing and some other issues gripping our simulation labs, maybe we're going to have two students out in the hallway doing a go to clinical case study and then have two students doing a live simulation effectively so socially distanced. And then we may meet at a socially distanced conference room and talk about comparing the four clients that they've cared for. You know, the sky is the limit with our creativity these days. So rather than actually reading this list, what I'm gonna do is actually take you to the internet and show you these faculty resources. So here we are again at NurseThink. This is our NurseThink website. And while I'm here, I do wanna bring up one other thing. Please stay tuned to our live trainings. These are live trainings that happen throughout um, the months and we can actually look. So let's say I'm a faculty member and I would like to look at the NCLEX RN review guide. And so we have several educational um, things that you can do across your, um, the months about that. And you can do it for any one of our products. Um, and so the complete uh, training package is quite robust and you can go through here and look at it. These are all free. You do need to register for them so that you can get the Zoom link. But again, that live training, uh, is free and available to you, and we want to make sure that you use it when you're using the uh, NurseThink tools. So again, we found all of the information that we looked at before under the uh, NCLEX RN Complete here. I did want you to think about the fact, though, that um, when we look at the faculty materials, you actually kind of have to go behind the scenes. So you're going to have to sign in with your account. If this is the first um, book that you've bought with uh, nurse think you will need to establish yourself an account if you've bought the hard copy book there'll be a code that's on the inside left front cover of your book and you will come in here and you will not have these resources yet but you will have a box that looks like this you can just cut and paste the coast the code in there and register and that will allow you student resources when you get to that screen, there's also going to be an instructor request screen. So if you are a faculty member, you can then request the, the faculty resources. So I've already done both those things, or all three. I've made an account. 
I've uh, gotten my uh, book registered and I requested faculty resources and this is where you'll find that. So let's open up those faculty and student resources and see what they are. So before we looked at chapter seven, that was protection. So I'm gonna look at that again. And here are the resources associated with um, this chapter. So there's gonna be faculty resources and there's gonna be answers to all of the exemplars and to the, the next gen exercises that are throughout the chapter. This is where those 39 videos are housed. Students can actually listen to an audio file. A lot of them do that while jogging. They can watch the video or they can download the transcription if they need accommodations. They can also download that uh, transcription and watch the video um, in order to, you know, kind of meet their own personal needs. If you have downloaded the ebook, if you have access to the ebook, here's where that PDF is. We would just open that. And here is the chapter. It's a PDF file. We just open that and it looks exactly like that chapter that we went through when we talked about the, the protection chapter. So here's meningitis. Here's that uh, uh, go to clinical case on pancreatitis, information on pancreatitis. And so all of that is, is within there. Uh, there's also exams and quizzes. I will say at the end of the summer, we are planning to lift all of those uh, quizzes out of this format and put it into an app, which will be much more palatable to uh, students. That is a resource specifically for students. It's a question bank that is not monitored by faculty. Okay, so let me show you a little bit of the faculty resources because I think you're gonna find them really rich and really useful. So for each chapter, there is a PDF handout. Some people like to save these to their desktop or to a file. Some like to print them out uh, up to you. And it talks a little bit about all the different patient assignments and the go to clinical cases and what's available within that chapter. So all the exemplars are listed. Then there's a little bit about nurse think tips. These are tips a little bit about all of um, this chapter and what's critical. Then there's gonna be next gen learning strategies for the go to clinical cases. And these may be questions that you ask your students. There's also some clinical judgment strategies for pre-class preparation, NCLEX preparation, things to ask the students to do in the classroom, things to ask students to do in clinical, and things to ask students to do or assignments you can assign for the lab and simulation. At the bottom, there's some really rich debriefing or reflection questions that can, you can use. Then it talks a little bit about the videos that are associated with this chapter. There's two, one called Concepts at Work and one called Pharmacology Focus. Then there's some strategies when you're using these videos. Finally, there's a file for using the images and there's also some uh, ability for you to correlate this with other nurse think tools, both the notebook and the complementary, uh, the case conceptual case studies. So that's all that is available here in that faculty resource. It really provides a lot of information. And then there are the answers. These are not available to students. And what you'll find is that they um, include the answers to all the exemplars and all the activities. So all that information is in here for chapter seven. So again, you'll have some of that if you want to assist your students in working on some of the different activities and things like that. So we talked about the faculty resources and the answers. We looked at the videos and we looked a little bit at the virtual book. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to chapter 20 because in the uh, back matter of the book is where you'll find the um, list of the different videos that are available. Here's the index. Please make sure you use that index in the back of the book um, very much. And here is a lab resource for your students. Here are the different go to clinical patient assignments. So you, as I said, every chapter has two of those. And then here are the videos. Let me make that a little bit smaller so that you can see it. So you see that there's a labor and delivery primer, there's a pharmacology focus for almost every chapter, 
Uh, there's looking at things like leadership, delegation, hormonal regulation, safety and immobility, just lots of rich, rich uh, videos that will really help you. And again, assign those to your students, have them do a reflective journal on those just to prep for class. One of the hardest things I find about teaching is when I teach students who have no context of what we're talking about and how much better it is for them to at least come to context with some idea of what they're doing. All right, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. These are some of the things that we have talked about. There were tips, next-gen exercises. There were clinical judgment exercises for many different uh, arenas. There were strategies for the videos, correlation with the other resources, images, and a little bit on debriefing. So those are the faculty resources that are available to you. Just enough, not too much. As I mentioned, the videos, there's two to three per chapter. Um, you know, when we're thinking about showing those videos, it's so important. They're usually about 20 minutes. The length is in your faculty resources. Maybe you want to assign all three videos when you're talking about respiration or when you're talking about cognition. Um, again, have the students spend time. We know this generation loves to learn by videos. So make sure you use those and they can be streamed or they can be downloaded. At the end of each chapter is a list of questions. There are, uh, as I said, rationale and blueprinting. They are used to provide student practice, but they also provide class, group, or pair exercises. Uh, one of the things we talk to our students about is making sure that you are active in your questions and answers. You wanna make sure you understand the rationale. What you don't want is think you guessed it right and therefore you stopped, because if you guessed there's a good chance that you could guess it wrong the next time. These qu uh, questions really meet some of the needs that I'm interested in as far as learning, looking at things like calibration and spaced retrieval. Students need to calibrate to know what they don't know. They need to make sure that they, can, they know uh, the topics that they have mastered and not spend a huge amount of time studying those, but they also need to know their learning threshold. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know, right? I'm sure you've said that a lot when you're talking about both yourself and your students. This calibration, this frequently doing quiz questions will enable them to think about and find their threshold and then study that material. We also know that doing frequent quizzing is a way you can practice spaced retrieval where, oh yeah, I talked about this two weeks ago in class, now I'm doing this test question about a client in labor and delivery with placenta previa, then I'm gonna see this again on the exam. And that spaced retrieval allows us to hear about it and then remember it and be able to retrieve it more effectively. So what are some strategies that you can use? You know that I really love teaching strategies. Um, and if you don't know, I will tell you, I love creative teaching strategies. So what are some things? Well, we talked already about group or pair work. Use the go to clinical cases with the nurse think time. You also may just want to stop in the middle of class, whether you're live or virtual, and just say, everybody turn to page 67 and let's stage this pressure ulcer. What we know about uh, attention spans in today's world is that we need to constantly change up our style so that students are able to really respond and may remain attentive. We can do quizzing or sometimes let's take a patient and let's give report to a client. And here I've been taking care of somebody with pancreatitis. I'm gonna make up a report and give it to you. That may also be things like SBARs or maybe you're gonna write a nursing note on one of the go to clinical cases or on an exemplar. Or you may want them to read an exemplar and come up with a client's change in status and then have them write an SBAR or a nursing note based on that change in client status. One of the things we know is that new graduates struggle with recognizing changes in status both in real clinical care and on NCLEX. So important that we talk about that. We've talked a little bit about creating admit tickets. I like someone gave me the idea many years ago of doing exit tickets. Uh, I think that's so great. Have them do journaling or reflections on the cases, on the videos. What did you not know when you came into this case or into class today? What is something new to you? And then reflect on that. The power of compare and contrast, I just can't can't say it enough. Whether you do the two cases in each chapter or whether you compare two different exemplars, what's the difference between the inflammation associated with pancreatitis and appendicitis? 
you can take out the appendix. We try not to take out the entire pancreas, right? So there's going to be a lot that we talk about. And then taking all of those top threes and have them really think about that being their one minute care plan. Have them thinking about how do I develop a plan of care for this client? What would I, what interventions would I um, plan to do? In what order would I do those interventions? But then how would the patient look when I'm done? How would I evaluate the effectiveness of those strategies? All of that can be worked in to the NCLEX review book. So again, we've got uh, faculty resources, we've got quizzing, we've got questions, we've got go to clinical case studies, we've got um, exemplars. This is a very valuable book that can be used for NCLEX prep, but what we're hearing from our customers is how important it is to adopt it early, how important it is to maybe not in the first semester, but maybe second, third, or fourth semester, really make sure that your students have an NCLEX review book my experience is that many students have buy an NCLEX review book early. Why not have them buy this one, which has a good track record for student engagement and uh, certainly for helping in clinical judgment. So as we think about it, let us know. Here's help at nursethink.com. Tell us whether or not you felt that this book uh, fostered clinical judgment and took the patient to the bedside, to the client side. Did it in help your students engage in active learning? What we hear from our customers is that it did help students really uh, enjoy learning and certainly saw it as much more of a bedside, client-side relevant experience. As I said, other things we hear is that uh, adopt it early rather than too late. Have students start thinking about the NCLEX blueprint and the QSIN categories and competencies early rather than later. All of that will be discussed in the blueprints and throughout this book. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed our search through the uh, NCLEX review guide. Let us know. Please email at help at nursethink.com. Uh, have a great day, and I hope you enjoy this very valuable resource. Take good care.